Well, the dust has started to settle on the 2023 Rugby World Cup and the Springboks Championship team have gone home to all the wonderful celebrations they've received duly in South Africa. And I thought it might be time now for me to go through my World 15 that I've picked from this tournament. And uh, I've watched every single game of this year's Rugby World Cup and some of them I've watched twice so I've got a pretty good insight into who I think deserves to be in this World 15 team. So let me know what you think. Let's see how many South Africans have made my World 15 and how about we go through it right now in this video. G'day everyone and welcome to Inside Rugby. If you haven't been here before, my name is Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan that's living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And on this show, I talk about all things rugby. And in today's video, I'm gonna name my World 15 team from this year's Rugby World Cup. And I've looked at all the games of this year's Rugby World Cup. I watched them all and some of them, I watched them twice. And uh, I've been able to put together a team that I think could be pretty compelling against any opposition in the world. And there'll be a couple of surprises there for you as well. So why don't you let me know what you think about my team. Let's have a look at how many South African Springboks, the world champions got into my team. And uh, I'll name every position for you as we go through the team. So let's start off by looking at the backs that I selected in my world. Now, before we start off, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on the criteria in which I've selected this team. I wanted it to be a very attacking team, but at the same time, I wanted them to be a team that could uh, get as many points as they needed to win any game. So a strategic team as well that was good at kicking, as well as running an offensive game of rugby. So that was kind of the criteria that I put together for this team. So let's have a look at the backs. And starting off in the back three and at fullback, I've chosen Bowden Barrett. And I still think Bowden Barrett is the best running fullback in the world. He can ignite a back line from anywhere. He's very good at bringing the ball back. And he's got that great strategic kicking option as well if needed. So for fullback, I choose Bowden Barrett from the New Zealand All Blacks. And moving on to the wings for my World 15 team and two try scoring machines. And... Uh, pretty difficult position to choose actually for a World 15 because there's plenty of great wingers around the world at the moment uh, in a lot of different teams and uh, many of them could have made this World 15 team but I've decided to pick on form and I think the two best form wingers in the Rugby World Cup this year were Will Jordan from the All Blacks and Kurt Lee Arenze from South Africa. I think those two were standouts for me. Jordan scoring as many tries as he did, eight in total in the Rugby World Cup. And uh, Kurt Learense was just absolutely phenomenal for the Springboks. I think his open play, in addition to his ability under the high ball, really uh, consolidated his position in this World 15 selection for me. So Jordan and Arense for me in the wings for my World Cup, uh, World 15 team. And looking at the centres for this team, and we start off with outside centre, and I've chosen Jesse Creel from the championship winning Springboks team. And the reason I've chosen Jesse Creel is because I think he was a player that really started to play his way into the tournament. He just got better game after game. And if we look at some of those knockout games, particularly against France, he was absolutely huge in that game and was one of the instrumental players, I thought, in defense that helped the Springboks win that game. He also had a very good final against the All Blacks, shutting down the All Blacks center pairing of Ioane and Jordan Barrett. And I think Jesse Creel played an outstanding Rugby World Cup and deserves to be in a World 15 out outside centre. And then coming inside Jesse Creel, well, I couldn't go beyond Geordie Barrett. I thought he played absolutely huge in most of the All Black games and with his kicking ability on top of that as well, both from a penalty kicking option, but also a general field play option. The All Blacks used him quite a bit to find touch throughout this year's Rugby World Cup and he got them a lot of extra metres by his long punt kicks. So Geordie Barrett I thought was huge for the All Blacks in the number 12 shirt in this year's Rugby World Cup and as a result I put him in my World 15. Okay now let's look at number 10 and number 10 for me was always going to be a difficult one. There's so many good number 10s running around 
in world rugby at the moment. You've got the likes, of course, of Johnny Sexton, who's just retired. You've got Finn Russell for Scotland. You've got Richie Mawanga for the All Blacks. And uh, there's a plethora of number 10s that are really, really good in world rugby. But I've decided for my world 15 to go with Andre Pollard. And the reason is obvious, the guy can win you a World Cup. And uh, since he came into the Springboks team in this year's Rugby World Cup, he really made a difference, I thought, to the Springboks team. His experience, his general leadership, but also his very cool as a cucumber demeanor when it really counts in games. You can't go past somebody that brings that level of experience. And I'm pretty sure I can say categorically that if Andre Pollard wasn't on the field for the Springboks during this World Cup campaign, the Springboks would not have won the Rugby World Cup in 2023. So there we go. That's uh, how important I think Andre Pollard is to the Springbok team. So he makes it as number 10 in my World 15 choice. Moving into halfback, and of course, we've got a whole host of fantastic halfbacks in World Rugby at the moment. And the likes of Aaron Smith, uh, who's playing for the All Blacks, of course. And we've got Gibson Park, who I think is outstanding for Ireland. But we can't go past, I think, Antoine Dupont, for France and uh, if not the best rugby player in the world definitely the best number nine in the world and Antoine Dupont brings so much to any team that he plays for so he's my selection at number nine in my world 15. Just his general play his kicking ability of both feet the way that he leads his team around the field and for a little guy he's got exceptional speed as well. He's not quite up there with Grant Williams from South Africa but he's definitely got plenty of toe when he decides to run from the base of the scrum or a ruck or more. So Antoine Tabont gets my um, nod as the number nine for my World 15. So there we go, there's my back line for my World 15 and um, some pretty tough decisions there I must have said, you know it was pretty hard to leave Bundy Aki out from Ireland, I think he had an exceptional World Cup for Ireland but uh, when it came to the crunch uh, his team wasn't there at the end. Other notables too that were close to getting into my team were the likes of Finn Russell at number 10 and uh, Duhan van der Merwe on the wing. I think he's an exceptional winger as well. We didn't probably see the best of Duhan during this year's Rugby World Cup. But there's plenty of players to select from. I'm sure that you've got a few others that you'll make note of in the comments that could have made the World 15 backline in this instance. Now let's move on to the forwards and have a look at the forwards I've selected in my World 15 team from this year's Rugby World Cup selection. Now let's start off at number eight and uh, I couldn't go past my homeboy, Adi Savir. He won player of the year this year after the World Cup and he was absolutely huge for the All Blacks in all of their games. And I also liked it when Adi became the New Zealand captain. I just thought he brought a different dimension to the All Blacks in terms of his leadership style. Very different to Sam Kane. And uh, I think the boys responded very, very well to Adi Savia as their captain. Had a huge Rugby World Cup, scored tries, was absolutely full gas for all of the games and really led by example. And uh, even though he's playing a little bit out of his position at number eight, he really did the job for me and consolidated his position in my World 15. Now moving on to the back two in terms of flankers, this was a very, very hard choice. and. Uh, Come up with a name that you may not have thought would have made my team. Starting off in the number seven shirt, and I couldn't go past Peter Steftatoy. I thought he had a fantastic Rugby World Cup, particularly in the final. He was huge against the All Blacks in defence, and uh, a couple of those tackles against Geordie Barrett were just absolutely immense. And I thought Peter Steftatoy really played exceptionally well throughout this Rugby World Cup for mine. So he got in at number seven in my World 15. And then in number six, well, again, we've got plenty of great choices for players in this position, but there was one standout player from a lesser nation that really caught my eye throughout this year's Rugby World Cup, and that was Theo McFarland from Samoa. He had an absolutely huge tournament for Samoa in their games. Um, I was so impressed with the amount of uh, tackles he made, but also the amount of uh, turnovers he won from breakdowns and he was instrumental in getting Samoa forward going forward in rucks and moors as well and uh, he was still running at the end of the game he was an absolutely huge presence for Samoa and uh, I really really like the way that he played so Theo McFarlane from Samoa has been named as the number six in my jersey for my world 15. On to the locks for my team and perhaps two of the best locks ever in world rugby, these two guys. And uh, 
I would love to see them play one day in the same team. I think it would be absolutely amazing. And I'm talking, of course, of Eben Etzebeth for South Africa and Sam Whitelock from New Zealand. Two talismans of their respective teams and two giants in the world of rugby, both physically and literally, uh, in terms of what they've given to their, both their nations, but also to world rugby in general. And of course, Sam Whitelock um, celebrating over 150 caps at this year's Rugby World Cup. A man to go to three Rugby World Cups, an absolutely amazing performance from Sam Whitelock. So I've chosen those two guys as my locks for my World 15 team. Let me know what you think, and uh, if you've got us some alternatives, put them out there and write them in the comments. Hey, moving on to the front row of my World 15, and a couple of bolters again here for you to try and digest. Again, I've looked across all the teams and decided to come up with those players that I thought showed exceptional form and also leadership at this year's Rugby World Cup. So starting off in the number three jersey, I've chosen Ben Taumafanua from Tonga. And uh, Ben, yes, Big Ben, over 150 kilos of Ben. I was absolutely impressed with Ben and all of his games for Tonga in this year's Rugby World Cup. Not only did he lead by example, he scored a couple of tries. He was absolutely huge in the scrums and he was fantastic in broken play for a guy that's carrying around over 150 kilos. So a fantastic effort from Ben Talma Fanua at this year's Rugby World Cup. And as a result, he's made the front row of my World 15 team. Then moving into the hooker position, one of the most exciting young hookers in World Rugby, I think, in Dan Sheehan from Ireland. He's made my World 15 team. I think this guy is going to do some amazing things in World Rugby, already is, and uh, providing a huge option for Ireland in that role as hooker particularly in general play. and So yeah, Dan Sheehan's really impressed me at this year's Rugby World Cup. I think he's a hooker on the rise. He's gonna be around for a while and he's gonna be instrumental in this Irish team doing some really good things in future tournaments. So he stuck out as the premier hooker for me in the Rugby World Cup this year. Might be a surprise for some of you to hear that, but uh, Dan Sheehan gets my nod as hooker in my World 15. Okay, the other prop for me that was a standout in this tournament was the Springbok prop, Ox Nacher. He was absolutely fantastic and of course put that huge effort in against England that potentially changed the game for the Springbok. So fantastic uh, performance from Ox Nacher in this year's Rugby World Cup. So there you go, there's my World 15 from this year's tournament. Let me know what you think of my selections. I'm sure you've got some other options that you would put in there as well. So let me know what they are, whether they're in the forwards or the backs. And I look forward to reading all of those in the comments. I've got plenty more videos coming up about the Rugby World Cup. And in fact, I've got a couple of interviews coming up shortly. One with a player that we'll talk to not only about the Rugby World Cup, but also the state of world rugby at the moment. That's going to be an interesting chat. So make sure you stick around for that. And I've also got a Kiwi bro that I'm going to connect with over there in New Zealand. He's got a YouTube channel talking about rugby as well. And we're going to do a little bit of a collab as well here on Inside Rugby. So look forward to that as well. If you like my content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be around with all sorts of rugby now that we've finished the Rugby World Cup. We're going to move on to the United Rugby Championship and lots of other competitions from around the world. And you're going to be able to follow that all here on Inside Rugby with Mark. So I'd love your company. Stick around and uh, make sure you add your part to this wonderful global rugby community that we're building here on Inside Rugby. That's it for this video. That's my World 15. Let me know who your choices would have been. And I look forward to reading all those soon in the comments. Until next time, stay well, stay, take care. And I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, bye for now.